So at this time, if the mayor would please uh, come up here. You hiding on me. I wasn't hiding. I was just standing in the shadows. The two uh, plaques that are back there in the back, one of them will go to the uh, city of E-Town. Uh, when we had the the veterans, uh, the Vietnam cut out and all by uh, the uh, tank company here in town, they had some scrap left over. And that Vietnam, both of those are made from that scrap, which they were going to only uh, wind up throwing away. So we have one for you, Mayor, that uh, we really, we really appreciate you. You know the veterans, uh, and a, a veteran couldn't have a better place to live, as far as I'm concerned, in Hardin County. So. Well, thank you very much. On behalf of a grateful city, we gladly accept. So, thank you. You're entirely welcome. We look forward to putting that out there. At this time, uh, we will uh, have our uh, post commander 113, uh, Joe Garrett, who's been in it for two years. Uh, and, you know, I think he's done a fantastic job out there, especially for the veterans and uh, for the post and for the community and uh, the youth uh, in this, in this uh, county. They've done a lot for them. So at this time, the other one will be going to uh, Mr. Joe Garrett. And we appreciate you. Well, on behalf of all the members and all the veterans of the Hardin Post 113, uh, I have to tell you, Denzo, we, we really appreciate that and we'll put it in a prominent place. And I definitely appreciate it because I have two tours in Vietnam. So it, it's, it's special to me. So thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Providing the music for today's ceremony is the heart of Kentucky's men's chorus. Fellow veterans, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the city of Elizabethtown and the American Legion Post 113's annual Veterans Day ceremony. My name is Joe Garrett, and I'm the commander of Hardin Post 113. Today, we celebrate America's veterans for keeping this nation the land of the free and the home of the brave. For over 100 years, the American Legion has been dedicated to serving those who have served. The commitment to caring for America's veterans is one that transcends partisanship, is a commitment that covers all races, all genders, and all faiths. Remember how occasions like this started on the 11th hour, or the 11th day, or the 11th month. 
November 11th, 1918. The gun stopped. It was a moment to be celebrated as the largest and deadliest war up until that time came to a merciful end. We still, still celebrate that moment, only today we call it Veterans Day. War is never anything to celebrate, but peace is. The peace in between these horrific wars is brought to you mainly by our veterans. The sacrifice brought forth during those wars is also made mostly by our veterans. And that does not mean others do not suffer. Civilians are often killed, and nobody understands the sacrifice more than our Gold Star families. We honor the fallen on Memorial Day. Although the American Legion remembers them every day, Veterans Day, however, is for all who have served. While many veterans are humble, there are no such thing as insignificant military service. It is why the American Legion only requires a single day of honorable military service to join our ranks. We understand that it's not just the sacrifice and service that are important, but the willingness to offer your life in defense of this nation that sets veterans apart. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise to honor our nation and our flag. The national anthem will be sung by the heart of Kentucky's men chorus, and then remain standing for the invocation provided by our post chaplain, Homer Wine, Jr. and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red flare the bombs bursting in air came proof through the night that our flag was still Let us pray. O oh God, eternal Father and everlasting King of heaven and earth, we render you acknowledgement of your supreme dominion over us and gratitude for your eternal solitude and watchfulness. As we gather here in humble recognition of your divine province, we beseech you to usher into the world of confusion and doubt, peace, tranquility, which alone can come from you. Bless and protect our nation. Be merciful to our honored dead, the memory of those valor, courageous, and risen, inspires us to noble action and eternal vengeance and presentation of your priceless liberty of our rights and enduring happiness. Guide and direct our minds to a thorough understanding of your duty to you, our country, and to another. Awaken in our hearts the desire and the will to accomplish the ideals of which the nation exists, so that out of our determination and upon faith and understanding, a world dedicated to preserving individual rights and dignity of men, a world of tolerance, justice, a world intent on loving and serving you, our Lord and Master. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It is my honor to welcome here today uh, friends from our city county, state, and federal government, active duty military, veterans, families, and friends of those who are here, local media organizations, local law enforcement, and first responders. Veterans Day is a day for honoring our veterans, those men and women who have served and are serving our country. Please join me in recognizing all of our great veterans present for the day ceremony. Veterans, if you would or if you could, please stand or raise your hand.
Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Elizabethtown Mayor Jeff Gregory, who will make some Veterans Day remarks. Thank you, Commander Garrett. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to get up here. This is the second time I've gotten to do it, and uh, it's quite an honor and one that I will always cherish. Uh, I've said multiple times the fabric of our community is made up of our veterans, especially being so close to Fort Knox and, and the people that have gone to Fort Knox and, and retired from there and made this community their home. They have really improved what we have here. And so I think across the state of Kentucky that uh, in a lot of ways we're the envy uh, of a lot of different places because we have such a strong fabric of veterans and what they've given back and contributed to the community. I'll also say that the backdrop that we have here for this service and for other services that we get to have out here annually, I would argue with anybody and tell them this is the very best in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and there's a young lady that I want to recognize in the audience, Mayor Berger, if you'll throw your hand up. I would love to take credit for this wall, but she is one of the staples of being able to get this done. So. I like to put her on the spot every year. I know she appreciates that. I also want to say thank you to our Parks and Rec Department. Uh, Seth Breitner, Kerry Wooten, and all of their staff do a great job out here taking care of this wall, taking care of the grounds, and uh, they really appreciate what we have out here as well. We have a tremendous American Legion post led by Commander Garrett and the things that they do in the community are outstanding and we appreciate all of their efforts and the great partnerships that we have with them as well. So thank you, Commander Garrett and the American Legion. <laughs> Growing up in E-Town as a, as a child and even into my teenage years, uh, you don't realize the effect that the veterans, whether uh, they served in Europe or in uh, the South Pacific, Korea, in Southeast Asia and Iraq or Afghanistan or anywhere in between, you don't realize the effect that they have on you and what they come back and add to their community. So as I grew up, I didn't have a great appreciation for that, but as I've gotten older, I've learned what a lot of different citizens in, in the city of Elizabethtown have been through in, in those different uh, capacities. And so there's a great appreciation for that. A uh, baseball coach that I had for years was a Vietnam veteran. Uh, the person that cuts my hair every couple weeks, a Vietnam veteran. And uh, I've had the opportunity to learn a lot of great life lessons from those people because they're just solid in so many different ways from things that they've been through and their time in the military services. So I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, when I went to the University of Kentucky after I graduated from high school, one of the best things that ever happened to me was I got the opportunity to get a part-time job at the VA hospital on Cooper Drive there in Lexington, just, just off of UK's campus. And what I did there at the VA hospital, I'm sure some of you all have been there before, is I worked in admissions. So I had the opportunity to speak to several men and women who had served in, in multiple capacities and get to hear their stories and see the things that they'd been through, service-connected injuries, whether it be mentally or, or physically or emotionally. And uh, I just had such great appreciation for them then, and I have even more now. So. Uh, you, you'll hear me continue to say thank you to our veterans over and over, but uh, the appreciation's great. And uh, a friend of mine, Daniel London, posted on Facebook this morning that this is one of the most important days on the calendar, and I totally agree with him. And uh, we don't get to tell you all thank you enough. So I want to continue to do that, tell you how much you're appreciated by city government, by the city of Elizabethtown, by Hardin County, by the state of Kentucky, and a grateful nation. So thank you for all that you do. Uh, our doors always open at City Hall, as CT and, and Griff and some of the other guys will tell you. Uh, we're always here to support the veterans, and thank you so much from a grateful community, and God bless. Congressman Brett Guthrie represents the 2nd Congressional District of the U.S. House of Representatives. The 2nd District is the home of the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln, Mammoth Cave, and Fort Knox. Congressman Guthrie served, serves on the House Energy and Commerce Committee and the House Committee on Education and Labor. Congressman Guthrie graduated in 1987 from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point and went on to serve as a field artillery officer in the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault at Fort Campbell. He later earned a master's degree from Yale University in public and private management, and he is married to the former Beth Clemens. They have three children, Caroline, Robbie, Elizabethton. In May 2020, Brett and Beth were both blessed with their grandchild, Rowan. 
daughter of Caroline and her husband Ryan. Congressman Guthrie. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. What a great privilege to be here in the shadows of Fort Knox in the home of the new Fifth Corps. And that great what the great work for this community. A three-star command. That's just just fantastic. It's great to be here. I spoke at Veterans Day last year uh, right outside of uh, Gla in Glasgow, and the person that spoke before me, they introduced him, and he said he had 300 jumps. And I got up, and I said, well, he has 295 more jumps than I have. <laughs> but it's not 300 more jumps than I have, so that's... And, and it reminds me of the story of the 101st. You know, General Maxwell Taylor used to be uh, the commander of the 101st at one time, and he told a story that he was inspecting the troops, and he came across a young soldier and said... Son, do you like jumping out of airplanes? He goes, who are Yes, sir, airborne. Comes the next guy. You like jumping out of airplanes? Who are Yes, sir, airborne. Gets to a, down the line, gets to one guy. Says, you like jumping out of airplanes? He goes, no, sir. About, felt like, about like me, quite honestly. He goes, no, sir, I don't like it one bit. He goes, well, why did you join the airborne? He goes, sir, I like to be around the type of people that like to jump out of airplanes. <laughs> and that's why I like coming to Veterans Day events. I like being around the type of people that want to serve their country and do things for their country and and uh, I'm going to be brief so General Tucker has plenty of time. What I want to say and just kind of quote from um, or reference a couple of speeches by self-proclaimed native son of Hardin County. Now, I also represent LaRue County, so I know the difference. But he said he was from Hardin County because at the time he was Abraham Lincoln. And in the second inaugural, if you'll, I won't go through it, but he talks about, you know, kind of binding the wound and, and coming back. And he says our obligation as a country is to take care of our veterans. That's, that's our job. That's, that's kind of the gist if you get to the end of the, I think the second greatest presidential speech ever given. The greatest speech was given was really about why we have veterans, and that was the Gettysburg Address. And he says in there, it's that government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That's what we're here to prove. That's what we're defending. That's what we're about. And he doesn't say if we don't do it, the Chinese will do it. If we don't do it, some back then Europe will do it, or Russia's going to do it, or somebody's going to do it. Abraham Lincoln says, if we don't get this right, government of the people, by the people, for the people shall perish from the earth. And I know the difference in Memorial Day and Veterans Day, and we're here for celebrate everyone, but he was there to dedicate a cemetery for people who gave their lives for that principle and that purpose. And if you think about it, where in the world would you have a very close election for the leader of your country, and we're all out here doing normal things, we're not riding in the streets, we're not moving forward, Currently, as we speak, I know the White House is planning their, their case to present to the court place. So we put a system in place and our veterans defend it. And those systems are there in place today, working and moving forward. And we're sitting here in a kind of a time of anxiousness. If you're, I'm a little anxious about the situation. But we do know, and I think we're going to have faith in the end, whatever happens in the end, the president gets to present his case, he gets to go to federal court, and, and in the end we're going to have, at some point, a a peaceful settlement of all of this. And I would say if you go back to what Abraham Lincoln said, we, the men in, the men at that time, I assume, that were buried at Gettysburg that he was dedicating it to, did give their life to the cause of self-government. And we've proven to be citizens worthy of that sacrifice. We were able to govern ourselves. And, and not many people throughout the history of the world can be able to say that. And there's not a better defender of that than our men and women are on active duty today. Jossie, Judge Berry there in Hardin County at Fort Knox. The new Fifth Corps that's coming in to defend, they're there to defend freedom in Eastern Europe, or what we used to call Eastern Europe. The most of the soldiers are in Poland, the headquarters are here. And so we're part of that, and we're part of that. And I'm proud to have any red legs here. I'm proud to be an artilleryman. All right, I can't, my ears are ringing. I hope your ears aren't ringing like mine are. But are proud to be part of it, and and I'm ho I know all of us are here today because we're proud to be part of that great moment of proving again that this country is worth defending, because nobody else on earth will do it like we do it. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a great pleasure for me to introduce our keynote speaker. Major General Retired Terry L. Tucker. General Tucker was born in Buffalo, West Virginia and raised on a small farm in Putman County. He has a Bachelor of Science degree from West Virginia State College and a Master of Science degree from Florida Institute of Technology 
and a Master of Arts and Science degree from the Command and General Staff College. He joined the Army in 1972 and retired after 34 years as a muddy boot soldier. He served in light infantry, mechanized infantry, armor and armor cavalry units, and he served as an Army Airborne Ranger. His last duty assignment was at, as Commanding General, U.S. Army Armor Center and Fort Knox. During his military career, he's also served as a Deputy Inspector General for the Army, Operations Officer for United States Army Europe, responsible for 92 countries in Europe, Africa, and the Balkans. General Tucker commanded the nation's worldwide effort for search and recovery of American prisoners of war and missing in action. He also commanded the famed 7th Cavalry in combat during Operation Desert Storm. The 1st Squadron, 1st Cavalry in Europe, and the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment at the Army's National Training Center. General Tucker holds many awards for distinguished service and valor in combat. A few of his military and civilian awards include the Distinguished Service Medal, Silver Star, Bronze Star, Defense Superior Medal, Legion of Merit, five awards, Air Medal, Meritorious Service Medal, five awards, Parachutist Badge, Ranger Tab, and the Army Staff Identification Badge. He has been elected to the West Virginia State College Hall of Fame and was honored as the 2013 Distinguished West Virginian. Since retirement, General Tucker has focused on volunteering in this community, furthering Calvary, Armor, and Veterans Organizations. He currently serves as the President of the U.S. Calvary and Armor Association, is the former Vice Chair of the Kentucky Commission on Military Affairs, Co-Chair of the University of Louisville Fort Knox Community Partnership Advisory Board, member of the Sullivan University Systems Military and Veterans Board of Advisors, member of Armor and Calvary Heritage Foundation Board of Directors. He is the founding member of Warriors of Field Legacy and is the honorary colonel of the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment Black Horse. He and his wife of 50 years, the former Patty Kelly, reside in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. They have two grown children, both of whom served our nation. Chris as a combat veteran, Marine Corps infantry officer, and Tracy as an elementary school teacher. They have three grandchildren. I now present you General Tucker. I've been accused of having no original thoughts. <laughs> so today what I want to do is reinforce some of the things that have already been said here. First, I'd like for everybody to look across that field to the east. The high plains in the distance. It's Wednesday. It's freezing cold and it's raining. It's the 11th month of the 11th day. And in five minutes, it will be the 11th hour. Artillery's fallen to the front. And artillery has fallen to the rear. On the left and on the right of the line, there's fighting. And to the front, or mines and wire, it's no man's land. And in five minutes, the war to end all wars will cease. The guns will stop shooting. And all around the world, there will be cheering and great celebration. But on this battlefield, and in these trenches, there'll be an eerie quiet. There'll be no cheering and celebration from the men who have endured and survived. Just 
an eerie silence and thoughts of their buddies, the ones who did not hear the guns go silent. Good morning, my name's Terry Tucker, and for 34 years I was an American soldier. And when it came to settle down after the Army, Patty and I decided to return to the best place we ever served and ever lived, Hardin County, Kentucky. Commander Garrett, thank you for those kind comments, and I promise you I won't talk as long as the introduction. <laughs> Congressman Guthrie and Mayor Gregory, it's honored to spend some moments with you and share the stage here with you. Judge Executive Barry and distinguished guests, but most of all, most of all, soldiers and sailors and airmen and coast guardsmen, and yes, even dadgum Marines, <laughs> I'm honored to stand with you. Today is about recognizing and honoring and thanking the millions of men and women who have answered our nation's call to defend it in times of peril. But most of all, I think it's just to say thank you. Hardin County, Elizabethtown, American Legion 113, American Legion Riders and Color Guard, thanks for all you do to support our veterans and their families in this community. Thanks to our local veterans, those who are here today, and those who can't be with us, active, reserve, and National Guard. I'd like to recognize our veterans from the greatest generation, those who changed the course of the world during World War II. Can you imagine what this world would be like if those 16 million men and women had not gone and done what they did in Europe and in Asia to stop the brutality and the intent of world domination. I'm appreciative of the sacrifice of the 307 Kentuckians who went to war during World War II and the nearly 8,000 who gave their lives. It seems that uh, we never accept the, expect the next crisis. How many anticipated Korea so soon after we dismantled our military after World War II? Our veterans from that war, like almost every war we've ever fought, served in an army that was quite honestly unprepared. Casualties were high. They had some of the most brutal fighting in brutal cold in a brutal land that we've ever seen. For those of you who have served in Korea, whether in war or in peacetime, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Over 88,000 Kentuckians fought there. and For them, it was not the forgotten war. Do you know that we will soon recognize the 56th anniversary of the beginning of the Vietnam War? It's hard to believe that the war officially began in January of 1965. Until recently, it was our longest war and certainly our most divisive. That was the war of my generation the first war that we watched every day on television. We all know someone that fought in Vietnam, and I think we all know somebody who died in Vietnam. The guy that I think fondly of, high school classmate, Jerry Simpson, graduated from high school, joined the Army, Five months later, November of 1967, was killed. His name is on number 37 on the east side of this wall.
But today we also need to honor the greatest generation of veterans who have served since the Vietnam War in places like Desert Storm and the Balkans and Iraq and Afghanistan and a dozen other fights that you've never heard of. In fact, I believe men and women from Kentucky have served in every war and every conflict since before we were a nation. Without that sacrifice, there wouldn't be a United States of America. So thank you, Hardin County, for standing up for this country. Today, there are too many homeless veterans. Our VA hospitals are crowded and filled. And too many old and young vets need our help. Our second largest unemployment and underemployed population in this nation are veterans. Most of these challenges will not end anytime soon. We need to do more. Over the last 10 years, we returned more veterans with major combat wounds than in any previous conflict. I encourage our local and our state agencies to continue their long-term efforts for our veterans. If there are any Gold Star mothers or families here, thank you for your treasure. And the families of our veterans and our soldiers, what will we do without you? So in closing, let me leave you with the last few random thoughts. The nature of war has changed, but it's just as brutal with long-lasting effects on our troopers and our nation as it's ever been. Through our entire history, we have gone to war unprepared. We've taken great early casualties. Then we won. Then we dismantled our armed forces. Then it seems we just repeat the process over again. I predict that the future will be more the same. When you see an old soldier like me at Walmart in the parking lot or at Lowe's or downtown wearing a veteran's hat, one of about a hundred different kinds, just say thank you and smile. I was raised by parents in the greatest generation. They gave me core values. They took me to church. And they taught me right from wrong. I got lucky. Fifty years ago, I was fortunate to marry Patty Kelly. A city girl from West Virginia. Can you believe that? <laughs> Patty Kelly saved me from my own foolishness. I got lucky again. And lastly, when Americans and their soldiers engage, it creates fear in, the, in our enemies. And it creates hope in our friends. So sleep well tonight, Hardin Countyans, because brave, strong American men and women are standing guard for your family, half a world away from all they hold dear. Remember them tonight when you say your prayers. May God continue to bless our soldiers, our families, and our veterans. Thank you, vets. General Tucker, on behalf of the city of Elizabethtown and all the members of Hardin Post 113, please accept this as a token of our, our deep appreciation. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate Thank you. it. Before we adjourn, uh, let's all rise for the benediction given by our post chaplain. Let us pray. Let us depart in peace and love and charity to our neighbors. May we join together in common goal of service to our God and country. Let us drive safely and carefully to our homes, and may God's blessing be with us all. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Please be seated. Folks, I again present to you Heart of Kentucky Ben's Chorus. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. I want to thank you for attending. I especially want to thank Mayor Gregory, Congressman Guthrie, General Tucker, the Heart of Kentucky Men's Course, and the American Legion family for making this ceremony a success. Most importantly, thank you to our veterans. Thank you for serving our country and protecting our freedoms. God bless you and your families. God bless our veterans, and God bless the United States of America. Oh,